reason where bad bad spawns. We'll just sort it out here. It's just me at the moment. Jason's downstairs just getting stuff sorted out. Good lad. So we didn't really get to see anything much at the start. What's the problem? I'll ask these guys. And see perhaps if there was an issue. Ah, oh, Burix has high ping. Okay. We can wait for that one a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. But yes, if you are just joining us, you've missed a heck of a lot of good games already today. And this isn't our last one. We've got one coming on a little bit later on. We are going to be casting. Let's get it up here for me. Bulgaria versus Israel. It's going to be a very interesting uh, match, that one as well. We haven't seen either of these two teams perform yet. I mean, at the same time, uh, there is a couple of big ones. Uh, Italy versus Russia is going to be big. That's a 9 p.m. CEST, by the way, if I didn't point that out. So both Italy and Russia have uh, a lot of players from a lot of the top teams here as well. But we won't be covering that one. If you do want to watch that one, you can check out Wiki's stream or Cyrus's stream or, or Linkor's or, or Sleep's as well as they are doing that one. We are going to be doing the Israel versus Bulgaria stream. Just uh, you know, have a look at these teams. We haven't actually got to see them much at all uh, so far. So we're going to be waiting on that one. Burix again, high ping. Lives in Germany, so I don't really know what the issue is for him there. And we may be having some games later on. Like they're they're un unannounced as as of yet, but perhaps Monday we might need to squeeze some more games in. We'll try and let you guys know if that's going to be happening uh, later towards the date. And uh, obviously, our Twitch stream is offline, so we can't interact with you guys in chat. Uh, thank you for those that have switched over though as well to Azubu and such. And uh, we're going to be ready to jump in. Yeah, of course, if you're on Hitbox there as well. It's kind of nice that we do have the option to stream to all those platforms. Or at least we will. Everyone's ready to go. Casters wise anyway. Thanks for that, Burks. Sometimes you've got to deal with that, though. This is a pretty important game, so understand that one. And we're going in. So, Elias, yeah, like I was talking about earlier, when we did see a little bit more Reaper there from the French side, I think that was just more of a preference from them than anything else. I don't know if the map pool really allowed for them to play the Genji in, into that as well as they would have liked, especially because Crew is playing Zarya. So we saw Miklo on uh, the Reaper there as well. But instead of well, we're going to be starting off with Ruins. Now, because we didn't see any play happen uh, in the first place, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. So obviously, Farah is, if there was ever a chance to see Farah, probably not going to be happening on this map. And we don't make it seem unlikely as well for Reaper. I don't really think we're going to see that here. Just going to hover that one for the moment. So we'll see if it's fixed now. But I, from what I'm hearing, it's not actually going to be fixed. So we'll is see it, how it works out. Is it Twitch out. bugging out? Yes and no. Everyone was saying just restart the stream and it fixes it, even the casters. But I was told by a technical guy that it actually was not going to fix it. So we'll see. Hmm. But at least we're still going to Zubu and Hitbox in the meantime. And hopefully we're local recording VODs, though I don't think we actually are with XSplit. So... There's a few other, other language casters here in game anyway, so yeah, so they can help us out. Anyway, going to be on to Ilios here. And uh, Burix had some ping issues before if you just joined us. That's why we are a little bit late getting in. So yeah, exactly the same team comps. No surprise there. This is kind of like the the uh, widely understood best combination to have on this map there. Valetar just sneaks away the health pack. Icefelt would have liked that there in that moment, but he's at least able to recall back and just avoid the damage coming in. Forsaken there as well, managed to get on towards Skipjack. Oh, eventually will fall. So, looking very, very good for the bot against the IS region. They're winning these brawls, they're winning these fights. This was supposed to be the map that the Germans were stronger on, but so far, they pale in comparison. Now, oh, Anak as well will be very, very, well, reasonably close to his next Dragon Blade. Valley Tiger already has another Pulse Bomb, or his first at least, in his back pocket. He gets us up so damn quickly. I mean, the, the point's been captured for 5%, and he has it up. I think that really shows the impact he's making in these fights for the most part, but that. Well, it's not a very good impact of a... Was he trying to be preemptive there? I think he thought they were coming all from that direction. Uh, so he just kind of threw it in there with, uh, without thinking too much. Uh, but in the meantime, it doesn't work out for him, but it doesn't matter, it seems. Uh, until Icefelt picks up that kill, and Valtaj are already working towards another pulse bomb, picks up a kill here. And Icefelt with his own pulse bomb, looking to turn this point back, is able to focus on Valo there. You heard the oh headshots man. landing. This kind of these two comps give you such a ridiculous brawl as well. Well, Forsaken, I don't know if he really wanted to commit towards this point, I guess to try and hold on to it for as long as he possibly could. He now spawns in a little bit later. He was probably hoping to tick up to a Transcendence, but I doubt he would have used it on that point just to try and stall it. It's more likely he wants to save it for the next fight. They're already 37% ahead. And so that's enough at least now for one more fight to come back on. It's not a big deal that it got s flipped back. Into the hold takes a little bit of early damage. Probably the, the long range salvo is coming in from Kloz. And the sound barrier was actually used there really early in the fight. 
Firebolt against the CIS region there. For some reason, Invictus let that one go. Seems to have worked out, though. They seem to be able to win that fight. Ice Fort, though, is still alive. Still has a Pulse Bomb to work with. He doesn't really care too much about the Transcendence coming in. Apparently, Tarja's Pulse Bomb doesn't actually connect onto anyone in particular here, but Ice Felt caught out and will be taken down. So he will fall, and now, it's, or now uh, Germany kind of go back to the drawing board here. They do have a lot of ultimates up ready to go, though. I mean, they don't have Transcendence, but they have the sound bear to buy time until Transcendence is available. And Cause is only at 70%, almost 80 on his Graviton Surge. Aina actually up against Arts here. I'm sure he's going to get some support out of Skipjack, but Aina had that uh, Orb of Harmony to keep him alive for a lot longer. Here we go. Dragon Blade. Oh, oh no, Aina disconnected. Uh, yeah, looks to be the case here, but he can't come back. There's nothing we can do about it. He's going to just have to wait. They're going to lose the player. That's the way it goes. Atien picks up Invictus there at the end in Germany. He's going to swing back into this one. It's definitely a good time to be doing that now as we're getting into the red zone if you are a uh, CIS and Baltic area player. 60% up on that one. I know. He's back now. Looks like it did fix That's the Twitch issues. Cool. Okay. So, there we go. We're back in. But, uh, well, we missed the first two maps, at least on the Twitch stream, but we're into the third. Germany. And CS and Baltic Air are tied up at 1-1. One one. So, I guess they really didn't miss out on two too much. No. <laughs> I don't think we... Yeah. There's someone posting, thanks for making us miss the matches, please. Grow up. It's <laughs> not the way it goes. Sound Barrier comes down there as well. It's going to be for the German side here. Oh! Good luck for Brooks there as well. Sound Barrier and Transcendence used over in that fight just to keep them the heck alive. It's actually worked out at least. Now Valley Tarja gets on towards Kratos. Probably looking for a little bit more if he can get it. Can he charge in that Pulse Pump so fast? Look at the damage. If you're able to stay alive for any decent amount of time as Tracer, you're going to have multiple Pulse Pumps per spawn in. Valley Tarja now has yet another one. Not quite connecting that one still. Maybe using a little bit frivolously because he gets them so often and eventually gets put down. RT are going to come across the point there, take it down. Also got Anak just prior to that one. So crucial pickups coming here from the German Genji player. Our Archer are doing really well here, actually. About to have his Dragon Blade, potentially the last fight of the game, considering. It's now do or die here. CIS and Baltigar need to touch this point, and they're actually being blocked off by the Graviton Surge. Someone trying to escape from that. There you go. Germany pick up the first map here in this best of five on Ilios. And around tied at one apiece. <laughs> He's on the best. I got, I got flashbacks to Hollywood between the UK and Finland there. Such a good game. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to have such lighthearted banter between these two teams as well. I don't know if that's the understanding they have. I don't even know if that's just their disposition towards the game. But even so. Serious business reigns supreme for everyone here. As although this game doesn't really decide whether either of these two teams, two teams makes it out of the groups or not, the winner gets a far, well, arguably a more comfortable seed going into the rest of the groups. This is the only group that actually has two really, really good like top teams, arguably like head and above, head and shoulders above first seed delegates, right? Mm. The other groups have like one really strong team. So if you take first in this group, you're not, you're probably going to be able to win and make it to Gamescom. Oh, uh, to Gamescom. God help me, to BlizzCon. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm starting to double think about how it happens. Maybe for first seed, you're automatically through. And then, like, the second seed's ballot out to see who's the last team's oh. remaining, and that's, like, the last slot. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on this, but okay. uh, either way. It kind of makes sense, really, doesn't it? Well, there's only, like, if there's only four teams going through and there's six groups, then, like, do the first team go through and then, like, the, the tier two teams or the second seed teams fight for the last two slots? I don't... Maybe, because then there'd be four games. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Nice felt going on for the Pulse Bomb. Oh, he's uh, throwing himself off the edge there as well. Oh, hello. It's all very dark here. Hello, my old friend. I can't even get back up. Fair enough. Germans with the players on the point right now. Valley Tarja wants to try and find an entry to get close, but Inter Hulk's not letting him close the gap. Pulse Bomb comes in, and look at that. Shield comes in. Inter Hulk fully charged up and ready to go yet again. Valley Tarja ruining the fact that he put a Pulse Bomb right next to Azaya, but he's going to have to deal with the consequences of his mistake as Borix takes him down. Orbs to the face is definitely a good way to add insult to injury. And now the Germans do take a bit more advanced position on this point. I mean, maybe Dennis was right. They definitely look stronger on King of the Hill. Looking pretty damn dominant, considering they only allowed, what, 6% for CS Multigar to actually build up here? Yeah. After losing the first fight, which often can yeah. be quite devastating on this map. And now they have... So a little bit of work ahead of them, a lot of work ahead of them, actually. They have Icefelt getting relatively close to his Pulse Bomb. Burst is going to actually have his Transcendence, who can stop this Dragon Blade coming in from Anak, which is like CS and Baltic's area, a big turning point to potentially win the fight with, because Valor doesn't have his, his Pulse Bomb yet, and they're going to have Graviton Surge. Well, 
Graviton Surge, as you said, comes in and Dragon Blades from both sides. We're going to stick with Anak here and see what he can make of it. Not much, really, because the sound barrier was used there by Kratos. It's very, very hard. No kills. It's like trying to cut a rock there. Anak gets absolutely nothing from that. And the German team, perfect use of defensive ults to respond. Love it. Bricks has 40% on his next transcendence. Kratos with 33 on his next, uh, his next sound barrier. That's how you snowball leads in this map. And it's such a good start for the German side. Yeah, but uh, Kratos and Bricks, they overlapped ults in that Graviton Surge. Actually, you sound barrier and transcendence together and invent to use Sound Bear, so baiting out two of those ultimates isn't actually that bad because now okay. Valtaja can maybe do a little bit of work here in this amount of time that he has to work, or uh, the way of time he's given after Germany kind of uh, to using too many ultimates there. And the Forsaken, I guess, having the Transcendence as well, but he's not able to save Evoke G there. He actually can't get towards the Monkey Man before he falls. Now, Rinchen the Hole coming back into the fight. One of the toughest Zayas to deal with, I'd say. Definitely one of this region's best. Showing that he can flex through a multitude of different heroes in this game. As I said, he's had top player status in multiple titles prior to this one, but now he's finally really getting somewhere and enjoying the game. And you can see it now in the way he plays. Feeling confident, just gliding over the map there as well. <laughs> Valentine to tries to take the challenge, but he gets shut down. Eight health into now. Hulk says, have you got any more? Well, 92%. I don't think there's really a chance to have more at this rate. So yes, they have really one ult and Svalotaja, and they need to touch the point as quick as they possibly can. They're finally able to contest it here and trying to go into the backside. Berg's going to be taken out before he even pops his transcendence, but it doesn't matter because the rest of his team has just wiped the floor here with CS in Baltic area. That's and Svalotaja is the last man alive. Pulse ball comes down, he takes down one, takes down two, but he's got so many more men to find. That's not even close, is it? After that first little flip over, the German side has it, and there's no one, no chance, no way for the Baltic side to get any sort of overtime. Two to zero now. Germany looking very, very good. They earned their stripes on Eichenwald, Jason, and now they're looking to finish the job in this next round. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we still have another game coming up after this match. We still have Bulgaria taking on Israel. It's at 9 p.m. At 2100, so 100 in two hours. hours. So we will have quite a bit of a break between this match and the last, but it will be the last one covered pretty much for the group so far until I think we get into the knockout stage next week, assuming we're going to be allowed to cover that as well. Remember, we're not actually an official stream for Blizzard for the World Cup. We are just a community stream coming in in our own time to make sure to do this because we want to bring as many of the matches that we can to you guys. Not to mention, so you can root onto your own region, root yeah. for your own teams. And we want to we want to see the games too. I'm sure you guys do. So hopefully you do appreciate it. That's why we're just uh, going to come here on a weekend and try and show you some games. But of course, that's not a hard thing to do. It's Overwatch. It's great. Let's now see what the German side can do. Anak making the switch over towards Reapy here. This it's going to have to make all the difference because it's the only real compositional change that we've seen here for the CIS region. No triple DPS like we saw earlier on in the evening. Of course, from Team Norway. That didn't quite work out all the way for them. But Internet Hulk, he opens up the account here for the German side. And Icefield Skipjack chime in. It looks like a landslide, an avalanche here for Germany. They're just dominating after those first two maps. One. Will we see any more from the CIS and Baltic region? They have to dig deep. They definitely do. I'm guessing they're down 2-0. They're able to actually take that capture point map on top of Anubis. And even struggled when it came to Eichenwald. Eh. <laughs> the Canadian now. Eichen. I don't know how to say it, man. Eichen. Eichen. Whatever. The German map for the castle. Oh my lord though, Artie goes in, Baruch's getting himself a kill as well. A nice fight, it's just the cleanup crew here. Germany aren't even letting the CIS and Baltic team remotely close oh, to the point. Wow. Individual brilliance like Valutandras is overshadowed when you have the Germans playing in such a coordinated fashion. They're not allowing these teams to get close enough to the point to even think about contesting it. <laughs> I'm sorry, the team bag thing. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean this German efficiency is proven to be a little bit too strong for CIS and Baltic area. You've got Valtaj with the pulse from up. You have the Reaper out of Anak to counter Skipjack because they're running, well, they're running that and they're running the Zarya, which Reaper does really well against the both. But look at this, just coming in from the back at oh, RTR. You're not going to miss these kills. Oh, the dash comes in, the resets are there for RTR, and he's got to get himself yet another one. Anak falls down, only gets three, but that's going to be enough for Skipjack and Kratos chiming in. And if you are on the side of the CIS and Baltic region, you're starting to drop your head. It's getting a bit tough. The bonus for them is that they're coming in with a couple of fairly impactful ultimates. No Graviton Surge available yet for Evoke G. That's something they're going to be looking to have, but they do have a Sound Barrier, Pulse Bomb, and, of course, the Death Blossom. So they can work with these, but still, it's conditional. They need to get up into this fight properly. They need to engage it well. Valley Tarja opens up first on the wall. Skipjack gets him with a Pulse Bomb, if I'm not mistaken. But Icefield still has one of his own. Anak almost gets boofed off the edge, but Kratos can't quite get the angle. They have to work around the side now, as it does look like finally the Baltic and CIS team established some presence on the point. Kratos wants to stay as live as long as he possibly can, trying to just keep himself topped up and stall it out. But 87%, yep. that's no joke. He's trying to buy as much percent that they possibly could. 
And it's so important, especially when it gets to 900% as well, because the pressure's really on for the enemy team, and they don't have much of a chance to attack back. So the closer you get to 99, the closer you get to, I guess, the 100, if, before it gets turned over, means if you get a complete wipe really quickly with all the players together, they don't have a chance to contest it anymore, and you're going to pretty much get a guaranteed win. But there's going to be a Groucho Surge pulling three together. That's going to be the transcendence by some time, but it doesn't stop Icefell to that post bomb. And that's going to be two big kills coming through, but CS have been able to respond with Claws picking up a double Valu, taking on Skipjack, and Icefell's just trying to stay alive on the point, trying to pick up this kill on a Valu in this 1v1, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough here. Kratos has turned on to Forsaken. We can see him just running away, rollerblading to escape from this Reaper. Ah, Claws responding so nicely with those first couple of kills, and that is. Well, a lot of ults exhausted here. Let's hope Artia, I mean, if you're a German fan, at least let's hope Artia then can jump in and actually change the, the pace of this game. He does have a Dragon Blade, and Skipjack has one of the most dangerous ults when it comes to this last point here. And they know that Forsaken doesn't have Transcendence because he used it, paired in with that Graviton Surge out of Verna Hulk. So Artia has every chance in the world to actually win this game here for Germany. Well, Dragon Blade comes out. You can hear the sound cue coming in. Evo falls down first. He's found himself a Forsaken. He, he blocks the first shot there. Forsaken gets the kick in, though. He shuts him down with a Dragon Blade. Beautiful stuff for Forsaken. Now he needs to come back and help the rest of his team, though. There's work to be done. But in Victus and Valley Tantra have been doing good work on the point. Laying down a foundation for a big combat here for the CIS of Baltic region. It's about time they woke up. Not a moment too soon. Yeah, people jumping off the point as well. Kratos just killing himself because he gets, needs to get the reset in, needs to join his team. This is the last chance basically for Germany. They're going to set up for the next fight. They do have Transcendence, they do have the Pulse Bomb, and they're going to have Sound Bear soon. But CS is ready. Anak, I'm, I'm surprised to actually not see him teleport up a little bit high, a little bit sneaky to actually use this Death Blossom efficiently. But 87% taken on to 90. This is the last chance saloon here for Germany to take this point back. Big job for Icefault. That Pulse Bomb in his hands needs to be used effectively. He gets it stuck towards Evo. That's a good start. Forsaken can't save him there. The Transcendence comes in, but it's going to perfect, protect the rest of his team, though, as Icefault now is going to struggle to make any kind of damage. Tick, they got the defensive ults when they needed them there, and the CIS and Baltic region are going to keep themselves in this game. They keep themselves alive just on this last map here. And, uh, Lighthouse going to go in their favor. But still, you're definitely not out of the woods yet, especially with how good Germany were looking on those first two maps. I can still finish it here in this next round. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be rough considering how one-sided the first two points were. That was pro like the first actual close match between the two when it came to King of the Hill on here on Ilios. Nice little note there from Evo. I'm actually a little bit sad to not see some Junkrats on payload maps because we were looking on Reddit earlier on and we saw how you can stall a payload with Junkrat by laying down inside of a bush <laughs> oh, with so your cheeky. emo, your like your sitting emote. I love that. But you're just taking a moment to himself. But they can see his health bar, right? If you hit him, you can. Oh, you don't right. just see it. True. Very cheeky. I like it a lot. They thought he was dead. I think that was the best part. I don't know how long that'll work out for. But for now, use it. Uh, uh, and definitely maliciously abuse it. Now, Valatage are off towards the side. Just keeping watch over the health pack. Making sure no one else from the enemy team can pick it up. And he can sort of get himself some secured kills. But over his head, jumps in the enemy team. Ice for now responding as well. Klaus goes in trying to get to grips here with the German side. But that's going to be a difficult job if you're hunting for a tracer here. And his old generation rate was insane. He's, he maintained a 40% lead over Icefelt the entire time. He's had his Pulse Bomb up when Icefelt was only at 60%. That just shows how well Valatage is playing this Tracer, and considering the scoreline is still 2-1, it's still tied at 1-1 a piece in maps, shows how hard it is for him to kind of like single hand, not single hand the carry, but to, to make this work, or how well Germany's actually countering against him in terms of being able to stay alive and, and deal with him for the most part. These last two fights, these last moments anyway, has definitely been Icefelt versus Valutaja. Both of them feature on the kill feed heavily. Now, Icefelt actually used his Pulse Bomb for that. Got two kills off it though, so that's highly valuable. But now Valutaja has his available. Throws it on in, doesn't get anything with it. Kratos actually falls to it though. I misspoke there. Valutaja again getting onto towards Pyrrhix. No one is paying him any attention. No one is stopping him. And Internet Hulk also going to fall to the combined damage of him and Anak. Oh my lord, now! Finally, why is it now the CIS and Baltic region decide to fire up? This is an impressive increase in performance over their previous maps. 35% accounting, and our tier has that Dragon Blade available, but the problem is there's a Transcendence out of Forsaken. And Forsaken, I mean, he's proven many times over this series, our tier has to question whether or not he can easily pick up a 1v1 against him because Forsaken's been able to win out these trades. For a good portion of it. Adak down to 10 HP though. Being forced back immediately here, being a little bit unsafe. And the Transcendence being forced out of Burrix to keep his teammates alive. Yeah, Forsaken doing the same there because Arte gets the Dragon Blade. You can't really deal with that. But Adak comes in there as well. Good timing on the Death Blossom. Gets himself two kills. Valetadra, I believe, got the Pulse Bomb off in that moment as well. Perfect fight cleaning up here 
And the Reaper really starting to strip chunks off of the German side. They can't get around him, they can't deal with him. And it doesn't even matter if they have Skipjack ulting in the middle of it. Anak is just putting shot after shot in. This is the last chance as well here for Germany. This is their basically last attack before they have to just trickle in one by one. And Icefoot cannot afford to die here. He, Germany need every single person they have alive, and they're going to be wiped out, I think, in this fight. Right, Graviton Surge comes in. I think you're right. So they do have another enough. attack then, at least. <laughs> I mean, say they don't have another attack, but yeah, true. because they died so quickly and so early, they do have a second chance. Actually, who's going to be there to catch it in time? Who's going to touch the point? 10% to go. It's going to have to be Icefelt, but he's spawning in quite late. Skipjack might be able to go over the top here. They're not running a D.Va or anything like that. Let's see. 98. Yeah, this is going to give them enough health, I guess, at least to get close to the point. But does anyone even get there? Yes, overtime is triggered. That's Kratos actually getting on towards the point first. Now Icefelt needs to make something happen. If the pulse bomb goes in, this could be big. Just one. Just Invictus, but that may be enough for the moment here. Icefelt now just dodging out towards the back, looking for Forsaken, who keeps his safe positioning going. It's a common theme for that man, but it's not enough in this case. Oh, oh Anak almost goes down, and that would have been the chance for Germany to bring things back. But the door shuts, and Burix is face and now Germany are forced to go to a fifth round here on Ilios. Anak had like five HP and if he got that kill onto him it would have been a decent reset to actually get around the corner. I don't know. That would have been a good kill but he still had what cause to worry about I think on Winston and he still had Valo on the tracer to deal with so and it wasn't going to be enough. What are we going on to? A slide house or is this well? It should be well. Shouldn't it? It yeah, is light it's lighthouse. Wow. Okay. okay. So does it mean you've seen Lighthouse three times this series? No. No, no, no possible. twice. Just, just twice, okay. Um, but this is the first map that CS and Baltic Area took off Germany. That's right. In Germany Elias. wanted well, but it might not happen. This could be yet another epic comeback. Well, have a look at this, Jason. RT has gone to McCree for this one. Yeah, it's Genji's not necessarily, I guess, being as good. Oh, this is a reduct response to Valataja. Because he's been just, he's been performing better than Ice Felt for the majority of this King of the Hill so far, just man. because of ult generation alone. Feels good, man. If you're forcing an enemy team to switch off of a Genji to McCree, you're happy. But Valley Charger, that's why you take it. Nicely done there. Picks the head off of that tracer like it's an apple from a tree. You know, Artia just rolling on back, just well, really going with emotions right now. As Forsaken walks into a peacemaker shot, this switch, Artia is a ridiculously good McCree. It's about time we saw him back on that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he's going to care too much about playing it. I think he might be happy because Valataja has just been such a, a nuisance for the entire enemy team. But the problem is he's got now a Genji because Anak switched from Reaper to him and Tracer to worry about. Only has one flashbang. So the chance of catching both those is going to take an Amy genius. A little bit of stroke of luck out of them to hit these shots. It is hard. It is frustrating as well. Anak goes in. He's looking for Artia first and foremost. Going to be blocking up a lot of that stuff. It was a shield coming in for Artia and he's able to keep himself alive here. Somehow he lives but still doesn't have the flash available right now. Has to wait a couple more seconds but it doesn't matter. He gets a direct shot on towards Valley Tiger with a Discord Orb and he goes off the edge. Can't even recall out of that one but probably wanted to go off the edge anyway as another failed attack for the CIS and Baltic regions had occurred. And Artia he knows he's public enemy number one. He knows he's going to be the focus here. Let's see if he can stay alive. It's going to be tough. At least with the position he's playing and he's going to be using that Deadeye relatively soon. It comes down to Valor and not catching him out. But what is this, like 2-0 and now for Artia against Valotage when it comes Tracer v McCree? And before it was obviously a little bit different story. Claus though able to swing around towards the backside, able to get this high ground looking for a Burks who's a little bit out of position. Why well, she was in a great position, but he got taken advantage of by Claus. But he hasn't died just yet, and Skipjack's able to respond with a kill onto Evo already. Oh, he's gonna be careful not to get knocked out. He just manages to get around the door jam. This is a dangerous place to be. You know, he locked in a room with Claus. And he had, goes over the edge. Actually takes Kratos with him at the very least, but Valley Tiger throws himself off very, very quickly. Pulse Bomb available. Primal Rage available for Skipjack as well. So even if the CIS and Baltigari get themselves on towards this point, they're going to be knocked off almost instantly there. It's the worst place to be stuck with a Winston when he has ult. It's not a matter of Skipjack being stuck in the point with the CIS and Baltigari. It's about them being stuck in there with him. The old switcheroo. Let's see what happens though. Skipjack as well. Keep your eyes on this man because he's going to be hanging around for a while at this rate. Doesn't Dragon care about Blade coming shield. in. He's just, he's just hacking completely through the shield on Azaria. Now he's going to be able to pop the Primal Rage and just smack them around as well. Just trying to buy some time. 93% now That's built big. up. Anak is trying to respawn. And with those two, now three kills coming through. CS and Baltigari will be able to turn the point back. That's really big from Anak. Gets himself three crucial kills. Burix, Artia, and Kratos all fall to his hand. Now the easy cleanup on towards Internet Hulk. And that ult we were talking about for Skipjack doesn't get much value. There was no one else there to really follow up on it. Not enough knockups either. And at the death, the point is flipped back. It's a long climb from here for the CIS and Baltic area. But if anyone can do it, it's probably these guys. And every tick that goes by, since so they're at 900%, you could just, it's just the pressure. It's the clock ticking away. They know they have to defend cons uh, consecutively for the next two, three attacks. And Evo with the Graviton Surge can do just that. 
Skipjack though on the high ground. Arch here there as well, being protected by that bubble. He's looking for maybe an easy pick that can actually transition this into a quick hold. And not to mention, Evo in a bad position. The Groucho Surge has come in through behind it, but they're able to take him down. And there's no follow-up for that Graviton Surge because they're able to pressure them back. Oh, wow. The chase comes in for Valley Tarja, though. He goes very, very low, but still falls. But the points flip back. It's Kratos on it. He tries to boop away, and I think he actually lands that one. Yes, Invictus gets onto the point, but he's killed before he gets there. And now Overtime is ticking on down. Is there anyone, anyone else from the CIS of Baltic area? No, there is not. Germany finally take the series away. The closest one of all the weekends, but they will top their group. Group. They come out strong, finally recovering from a little bit of a weaker rounds here on Elios to bring it back 3-2. to two. Claws getting the play of the game. Fire oh, is this for? Is this the... Oh, Jesus. I love me someone to play the some game, some barbecue. Dude. They're like flies going into a, a trap. Fly zapper. Yeah. Z Z I love them. Except the flies probably wouldn't care and would brush it off in Australia up against one of those. <laughs> well, some of them don't even fit through the grill in them. Like, because there's, oh, there's a grate in those to protect people yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Some of them don't even fit through that. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, it's that freaks me out. But there you go. Germany, after Inhoke telling us they were struggling against this team, only been able to beat them on Koth, be able to beat them on a payload map. Yeah. They did lose a capture point, but nonetheless, I think we've seen that this group alone has probably two of the strongest teams. Right, exactly the, the str uh, closest group out of all of them. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nutty when we get to see these guys go up against the Scandinavian counterparts in later days. But, I mean, if there's any payload map you want to play against a team you already know is better on payload maps than you, it's probably going to be Eichenwald because that is the random factor sort of yeah, thrown in the mix. Newest map. 9 p.m. is going to be our last game of the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Israel going up against Bulgaria. It's going to be a nice one to finish things off and just see what's cooking over in those regions, see what's happening yep, in the local East We haven't actually seen there. either of them playing yet. No, not at all. On stream, so hopefully we get to represent those countries here. You guys can root on your favorites. Yeah, it's going to be the plan. We're going to be back after the break at 9 p.m. Hour and CEST, a half. an hour and a half away, 90 minutes. Set your watches. That's when they schedule the match. That's when we're going to be back. In the meantime, relax. We'll see you soon.